So Smart BCH, it is a basically uh, an Ethereum clone with a bunch of optimizations that has uh, Bitcoin Cash as its uh, base uh, currency, base coin, and um, it has um, miners basically choose the validators. They, they basically are the validators um, so far. And um, is it good? Is it good for Bitcoin Cash? Now, Andrew Stone, whom I um, you know respect immensely, thinks that um, it's not right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what to think about um, that. I don't. I don't quite get his uh, criticism. I think that well, we'll have to wait and see, right? Of course, you know, if you look at, for example, um, SLP tokens uh, and BU's um, group tokenization proposal, right? These things are kind of put into doubt, put into question, because if we have smart BCH, why are we going to still have tokens on mainnet, right? Especially because, um, you know, having tokens on mainnet actually uh, increases, um, you know, the, the nominal size of, of blocks because of all the op return uh, data that, you know, has to be stored, uh, you know, in blocks, right, because of these, these token schemes. Um, you know, I think there's an argument to be made that, you know, both ways, I'm not sure what the best way is, but, um, you know, I think it, it is ultimately a good thing that we have a uh, smart BCH. We're going to have the chance to, to experiment with that. And, you know, maybe this is how uh, Bitcoin should have been in the end, right? Instead of um, Vitalik going off and creating, you know, a whole new coin with a, with a big pre-mine and, what, and whatnot. You know, it would have been interesting if we could have had this, you know, in some kind of symbiotic relationship with, uh, you know, with Bitcoin. But, you know, whatever that we're in a fractured uh, cryptocurrency world, so we're doing the best we can. Now, um, I have seen some people rushing in on Smart BCH. There, some people feel kind of, uh, you know, urgency, and I would just say, don't feel an urgency because there are some issues, right? Number one issue is that so far there's only one bridge and it's centralized. You basically have to go through uh, CoinFlex, the CoinFlex exchange. I have a pretty high confidence level in CoinFlex. It's run by good people, um, have nothing against it. Um, you know, uh, of course it does have some limitations. Uh, you know, it has, because it's centralized, like, I think they might even exclude the US, they might exclude Venezuela, you know, other countries. So this is a bit of a, of a, a break, right, on uh, smart BCH growth. Um, and of course, long term, um, having a centralized bridge is is not not enough. It's not enough. The um, Wang Kui, I think his name is the and the developers behind Smart BCH, they raised a thousand uh, BCH in order to fund development. They probably have funds from somewhere else too. Um, so they are working on a decentralized bridge, but. That even that decentralized bridge has some issues. Uh, it's due to be out in uh, three to four months. Uh, some things that concern me about the decentralized bridge is that basically three parties are gonna, there's gonna be three keys, it uh, looks like, based on code uh, that's out um, at, I think it's at, yeah, docs.smartbch.org slash smartbch slash sha-gate. So who are those three key holders, right? Um, and also the, um, you know, so, right, so you, th those key holders are gonna be the people who can decide whether to initiate withdrawals, 
right? So let's let's say you have SBCH on smart BCH and you want to come out, right? You have to depend on those three. Uh, if you're going to use the decentralized bridge, Shawgate, those only those three key holders can initiate um, the release of BCH, right? After it's been locked into the bridge contract. So, um, and then you have to wait about a day. Uh, so the miners or whoever holds the keys, or maybe it's the miners, they, the validators, they vote. Uh, and then you have to wait a, at least uh, one day, about 150 blocks, it looks like, before you can get like your BCH back on mainnet uh, via this. And then, and it could be um, held up actually 60 days. Um, yeah, and then, so there is the possibility that, you know, just these three key holders, um, I don't know who they are, I don't know who they're planned to be, could um, coordinate to actually permanently lock uh, BCH, right? So you can't actually withdraw uh, your SBH, SBCH, right? And, you know, I think it's great that, um, you know, it uses the base, uh, the, the, the base token, the base monetary unit for smart BCH is BCH. I mean, that's awesome. But some of the mechanics of that happening can leave open some questions, right? For example, they pre-created the uh, 21 million or so uh, SBCH tokens um, on Smart BCH, right, that represent the real 21 million uh, BCH tokens, right, so that they can facilitate exchange and whatnot. Um, but apparently all those 21 uh, million SBCH tokens are in the hands of just one party. Somebody correct me if I got that wrong, but that's my that's the information I've been able to discover. So that's that's like the full market cap of BCH and in, in the hands of one party. So you know I'm not sure that that's really ideal, um, and I haven't yet seen this could exist. All right, I just could be ignorant about it. I haven't yet seen how to apply to become a custodian there right or how to become one of the three uh parties that controls um the keys for the decentralized uh shagate bridge that's uh, under development so th these are some question marks right and also uh you know just kudos to like ben swap right that has set up their AMM on uh, Smart BCH. Uh, that's a real pioneering move. But also, I don't know who's behind BenSwap, right? Um, you know, I like to, um, you know, I like to give priority to projects that don't have anonymous founders. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not against anonymity. You know, like. Uh, you know, I know some people just want to have anonymity for whatever reason. And, you know, that's each individual's choice, right? I'm not saying that, you know, everybody has to get doxxed or everybody should, you know, like hand in their, you know, papers, please, or whatever. I'm not saying that. But like, for example, in the case of CoinFlex, um, like Mark Lamb is behind that. And, I, you know, that's a real person, right? And an impressive real person. So, like that gives me some confidence, right? Because at the end of the day, even though we say, you know, that, um, you know, things, you know, the ecosystem is decentralized and which we, we're trusting in the, 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 the game theory, the, the interplay of, of interest, the balancing of interests and, um, you know, and that you shouldn't have to trust anybody, like whatever, but like at the end of the day, there's still the human element, right? It's going to be a while before we pull out the human element. And even, you know, even when we, you know, get to an ecosystem that has a billion, uh, you know, active users, you know, the individual human element, right, the, the ability of any one individual to really have a large impact on what happens at Bitcoin Cash is going to be uh, severely reduced, right? But still the mass, the mass. Uh, will have an influence, you know, 
and uh, it kind of makes me think of psychohistory, you know, and the, the Foundation series uh, that just came out. Um, big fan of the uh, Foundation series of novels. Read them decades ago, and I need to reread them. Um, so, you know, for example, so that gives me, you know, and also to know that the developer, uh, at least the lead developer behind Smart PCH, Wang Kui, you know, we know who he is, right? And we know that he has the backing of Jihan Wu, which gives uh, quite a bit of confidence. You know, the same thing with the Bitcoin.com wallet. We know that people like uh, Dennis, Corbin, and Roger are behind that, right? So that gives a certain level of confidence, you know, also because, and also when you're thinking about getting involved in, in projects, look for that, right? Like, you know, you take, for example, the one inch uh, exchange, like, I, I'm not able to find a team behind that, even though I know some of the people who are by, behind it, but apparently that's, that's not public information. Um, you know, and that just kind of should give people pause, right? Um, you know, you should think twice, right? And, and, and that's, you know, that you should have a filter when thinking about investing because there's already been a rug pull on Smart BCH, um, the monkey cash thing, right? So don't be in a rush, right? And also, you know, there's a BCH community member, Kane, whom I respect, uh, talk to him from time to time. And he says, he had a post on Reddit saying people should be more money hungry, right? But um, you know, and I, I'm, I, when it, when what we're talking about is, you know, having a profit motive, right? I, I can agree with that, right? But don't rush in, right? Smart BCH is still early. Uh, just because you're the first project or of, of X kind or, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily, like, it's not a winner. To, it's not always going to be. A first come, you know, for you're first, so you win everything, right? Um, it there's more to it than that, yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of you know. I think there's a lot of promise in Smart BCH, but um, you know, I would like to see a little more transparency, a little more decentralization in terms of who, who's the custodian for these 21 million SBCH tokens. Uh, you know, who's who's hold, gonna, holding or gonna hold the keys um, for uh, the decentralized uh, SHA gate bridge that's under development by uh, the Smart BCH team. We need more bridges. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, for example, Kane, he, he's helping people, uh, you know, exchange in their, co their, uh, different coins for coins on smart PCH. That's, you know, big kudos to him. Um, but we need, you know, it's still early. So be cautious. I think that's my basic mes message on, on smart PCH. Um, so yeah, let's keep building Bitcoin cash.